Testing, testing. I believe we're rolling. Ha <laughs> ha Welcome in, friends. Or should I say, welcome in, friends. Today, we'll be learning about obsidian finches. And what it means to be a goddess and an obsidian finch. Ah, the obsidian finches have such an interesting cultural background. No spoilers, but it's going to be a really cool day. Sit tight. There we go. Okay, cool. Fallen into the abyss. <gasps> Yet, my inner fire remains unquenched. shall guide me to rise from the ashes to return to the battlefield my name is Talim sunlight forms my wings and fire pulses in my veins Until victory reigns through countless triumphs, my flames will never die. Now, I think they've got the original chick doing the voice, as far as I can tell. I think it's the same actress, which is awesome. I really think they got. Uh, the same girl to do it so that's already starting off on the right foot as far as I'm concerned um, got one more really good yeah here we go just a little more Taylene for you first also everyone says Taylene I don't know about this Tallien business <laughs>
and this is my afk arena account it's fully free to play and about four and a half years old um started playing in 2020 wait where'd she go there she is she was actually my first celipogen <laughs> hypolestial uh and she let's see looked like this a little bit less uh, less fancy. This is what I believe her model looks like. The basic, basic bitch uh, Obsidian Finch. <laughs> and she's gorgeous, by the way. There's really not too much basic about her. Um, let me turn your chat on, too. Sorry, guys. I didn't see that you... Here we go. All right. So... And we'll, we'll talk about her awakening in a bit, too, because I do want to cover it. But um, this is what she looks like awoken. And that was what that video was, was uh, the threat of... What's his face? Peter Frampton, <laughs> uh, I believe, is, is what woke her. And she and Aster, who... Aster is part of this race that are these... I would love to get her in-game, too. Um, this cute little, I forget what they call her, uh, because I, I want to call her a bulb sprite all the time now. What is she? She is a, a phoenix flower? No. <laughs> She's like a keeper of the obsidian finches. I guess they don't ever say what she, I, she, there's got to be a word for what she is. Anyway, she's like a little bulb sprite um, that keeps the obsidian finches full of, I guess, energy. She like, you saw her like gathering the fruits and stuff. And there's got to be a noun for her. Huh, I don't see one. Anyway, well, that's not the, I, I don't even think that she, it's an interesting part of the Obsidian Finch's story, but I don't believe that this part is going to be involved yet, although who knows. Um, I believe we're going to start with the initial Taylene story, which does involve Tassi and uh, Ulmus, which is why I was thinking that we are in that time period, as I said. We talked about it a lot last week during the Ulmus show um, about it being that late 1600s time so afk arena came out and the the plot line timeline what is around like 1707 or somewhere in there on the light bearer calendar um and honestly we need like a full out i should make a a full out timeline map I, there is one somewhere um but i should make a new one So, um, but we'll start with Taylene's story and, uh, and we'll move on from there. Yeah. Happy. I'm ha I, I will be happy to do that, um, after we do the lore. So it's going to be a little while, but I'll do that later today. You can flip back through it later if you don't want to hang out. Um, but it's. Sunday mornings or afternoon in this case my Sunday stream uh is the lore stream of the week but yeah I will we can show battle drills also um I'm not sure what you want to see I mean I can pop over to it real quick sure uh but right now I think we already cleared it so I'm not sure how helpful that would even be to you yeah see we're already working through our second clear over here I'm just a, a humble servant at the moment. Man, I missed out on my Vala usage, though. That's terrible.
Taylene, the Rising Phoenix. Taylene called in lamentation, her tears sizzling over her beak and falling hot to the ground. Her mother's lifeless form lay still beside her, still beautiful, black and red feathers moving softly with the breeze. The demons had come, and though her mother had been able to push them back, they had been too many. Taylene had never known such agony. She had never seen another of their kind. Her mother had told her they were the only two left, a race on the verge of extinction. All they had was one another. This was isolation. Even so, she would carry out the rituals as prescribed. When an obsidian finch died, their bodies didn't simply return to the soil as with the other peoples of Asperia. The intense heat that smoldered within them went cold, true, but their forms remained unchanged. Only when given to the Solaran furnace, the ancestral home of their people, could the body of a finch be returned to the land. Usually, the journey to the furnace was a solitary one, called the Flight of Return. Called the Flight of Return taken by a finch nearing the end of its life. Her mother had not been able to make this journey, so Taylene would have to take her instead. The journey, even by flight, took many days. Taylene was slowed further by the burden she bore. She traveled in silence and reflected. This was the first time in her life that she had experienced silence for such a long stretch of time. There was nothing but the sun the clouds, the wind, and her thoughts. She recognized the strangeness of the circumstances through her grief. The very last of a race that had soared since the age of dragons, a wise and ancient people, gone save one individual taking her mother on her flight of return. She looked out over the vastness before her, leading to the plumes of billowing smoke from the furnace, still leagues away, and made her decision. The heat of the furnace was incredible, even from this height, even for Taylene. She plunged down toward the source as cinders rose skyward, swirling around her. The acrid smoke singed her lungs as she dived ever closer, and her feathers began to singe. She was the last. There would be none to take her on her final journey, as she had taken her mother. She would have to go with her into the furnace. Her wings were aflame, and still she held on to the body. With a final call punctuating the existence of her people, she disappeared into the flaring crevice. She opened her eyes. The flames danced around her on a lake of molten rock. The heat now was warm, comforting. Sparks danced upward to dark, winged silhouettes. Finches, more than she could possibly imagine. Among their outlines, she spotted her mother. These were the ancestors the entirety of her lineage, stretching back to the beginning. A joy unlike she had ever thought possible washed over her, and a voice came from the swirling mass of finches above. Our child, here at last, all of us together. But it is not time yet. The age of obsidians has passed, yet the age of many others has not. They must persist until each of their threads reaches its conclusion. They cannot persist alone. We are gone, but still we are needed. You will return in new form. You will help them. You will return to us when the others are safe. We will always be Asperia's children and we will always send aid when she calls. Arise again in flame. 
the power of generations of finches flowed into her. Her blood became lava. Her wings radiated the heat of a sun, and the air shimmered and waved around her. She shot toward the heavens in her new form, a celestial. Fire trailed behind her in an orange streak, warmly illuminating the very land she would save. Flames to warm the good and purge the evil! Yet Taylene had no hesitation. Carrying the net where her mother's body rested, she plunged into the crack. Comparing with other creatures, Finches had a greater tolerance of heat, yet as Taylene traveled further down, as Taylene traveled further down, even her st- even- <laughs> Typo there. Finches had a greater tolerance of heat, yet as Taylene traveled further down, even she started to find the rising temperature suffocating. The net, made from vines, also started to crack under the heat. Taylene had to get rid of the net and gripped her mother with her claws as she descended. The temperature kept rising. The heat quickly drained Taylene of her energy. Her feathers smelt of burnt. In extreme exhaustion, Taylene's wings were unable to keep her in balance. She tipped over and fell into what seemed like a bottomless hole with the body of her mother. When she woke up, she found herself amidst a borderless sea of flames. Strangely, she did not feel the heat at all. Rather, on the contrary, the warm flames made her feel calm, peaceful, and secured. Though she heard the singing of birds, then she heard the singing of birds. Following the sound, she saw numerous finches whose bodies were made of flames hovering above her. Among them, she saw her mother. That must be the souls of my ancestors. This is the burning furnace. Taylene realized that she had completed her mission. My child, the last of our blood said a voice from the above, <laughs> said a voice from the above. It was her mother, and her voice was echoed by the voices of all the ancestors. From this moment, you are on your own in the world. But don't be afraid, my child. We are always with you. Flames will rebuild your wings and give you eternal life. Flames will be part of your blood and bless you with divine power. It will be your mission as a finch to use this granted power to protect Esperia. The brightness of the flames will nourish every good thing in this world. The power of the flames will burn down every evil thing in this world. We believe one day you will be welcomed by all living things in this world. The hovering finches let out a loud cry together and flied towards Taylene. They surrounded her and then dived towards her. Their bodies, made of flames, penetrated into Taylene's body and into her veins. Taylene's form began a metamorphosis. Her claws and beak were disappearing and her wings growing bigger. She transformed into a totally different form, a human-like creature with burning red wings. In eternal flames, I am reborn. Man, I want to see Taylene with a beak. <laughs> yeah, Trip, it is. I would say that hypo hypogeans, uh, it's also a little intangible. But what makes a celestial a celestial is that they become uh, immortal, I think, is the main thing with Celestials. Like, they, I guess, yeah, they're immortal. That's the, so, like, you can become a Celestial without, I don't know if, 
Yeah, she used to be an obsidian finch, which I believe is a phoenix, basically. But, like, a finch is more bird-like than... Or more, like, little bird-like in a lot of ways. You know what a finch looks like? Um, we have a lot of them here in California. But, yes, she used to be a, a true bird. Yeah, do it. Draw her with a beak. That'd be cool. Um... It is, it is strange and undefined in a lot of ways, though, Triv, you're totally right. Like, there's different ways that people become Celestials. In this case, I think it's interesting that her family almost turned her into one without the say of, you know, the, quote, the Celestials in the way that Ancelot, for example, was offered to become a Celestial after what he did at uh, the Bard Gate. And then, of course, he declined and they turned Zafrael into a Celestial instead, both because they had lost one, um, I believe, in the war with the Hypogeans, which is one of the only ways that a Celestial could be killed would be in, you know, warfare between immortals. Um, the thing that makes a Hypogean is, of course is of course very specific in some ways is it's that negative energies right so the negative energies of all the different living beings in Asperia create this dark force which can eventually get blown out of blown all the way up into turning that person into a hypogean if it becomes strong enough and if uh the demon or the hypogean uh energies sort of a lot of times they gather right so someone like lava tune gets uh half tricked half lured i don't know it's like i wouldn't necessarily say tricked because a lot of them you kind of seem like they want it like they're making that choice it's not like they're tricked but they are choosing a bad thing and then the negative feelings become all they are and they become the incarnate of that, you know, lust, greed, whatever. So hypogeans are very specific in that way. Celestials can be specific, like when they offered Zafrael a seat at the table, you know, like, here, become a celestial. We need another handsome guy. But in the case of Taylene, it was done by her ancestors, which I think is pretty unique. Um, who else is a good example of a unique creating creation of Celestial? Like, what were you thinking of, Triv, besides Taylene? While I bust out the big book. Let me head to my trusty library here. So, honestly, I think to cover Obsidian Finches, I think another great place to go to might be I kind of want to go to Matria for some back story on obsidian finches. I feel like it's a great 
relevant uh, place to go straight to in some ways. So let me um, let me try doing that. think we can get it uh in a bigger image otherwise i would just watch that one yeah the dusk feather oh here's um wait yes 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 here is her as a bird i knew that there this was around i found it i found her as a bird christina Yes, I was thinking about how, uh, about the fact that I had seen it before. I totally found it. You ready for this? This is great. Oh man, I'm so stoked that I just found this. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm with you, Triv. I was trying to think who else besides Taylene, like what other ways they are made besides Taylene. I'll have to look at all the Celestials right now while we're while we're doing this. Um, okay, here we go. Demons thirst for fire. Birds in the darkness. Even the obsidian finches are his praise. Combat whetted the demon's appetite. The mother exhausted her flame. The young finch loathed her only place. She carried her mother back to her ancestor's resting place. The power of the ancients. Rebuilt her wings, giving her an immortal new life. The young finch alone turned me place. She carried her mother back to her ancestors. The young finch alone turned me place. She carried her mother back to her ancestors resting place. The power of the ancients rebuilt her wings, giving her an immortal new life. Yeah, how great is that image, Christina? Isn't that cool? I really like that image of, of her as the finch. Um, we can use that, in fact. As, uh, as a background. Make it full size, yes sir. Nice.
But as I said, I want to I want to cover the Matria too because this talks more about Obsidian Finches. Matria is an Obsidian Finch who uh, goes wrong, and be, she's an Obsidian Finch who becomes a Hypogean. So she literally goes the the opposite direction with it, uh, which is really interesting. You've heard the stories, shortly. Of a world in ruin, and the divine birds who delivered it from peril. There's the Those ancestors few bore the burden of flying around. Salvation, and were rewarded with glory eternal. <laughs> glory or damnation. One by one, we withered into oblivion. Did we choose to bear this burden? Or did we exist just to suffer it? If this is to be the fate of the Obsidian Finches, then I refuse to submit. The gods have condemned us to extinction. But I will rewrite our ending with my own two talons. The flames are gathering. With my own two talons. Our rebirth nears. With my own two Mystic. talons. <laughs> Eep? <laughs> so that shows a little bit of it, uh, but her story, I guess, tells a lot more. Um, let me see here what else we've got. Yeah, I wonder what that's like turning from... Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. It'd be a great thing to ask Taylene. And we've got her awakening uh, video, but I think that is the extent of any more videos with her in them. Okay. Okay. Because there's all these really cool, you know, side cartoons and stuff of uh, of AFK Arena, now AFK Journey. So, like that, the animated one that, that we just had. There is a comic as well. There's, there's a, a really great comic strip um, that covers Taylene, which is another thing that I wanted to, to jump into today at some point. Um, Here we go.
For thousands of years, Hypogeans have coveted Asperia. Through that, we know that much. When darkness wreaks havoc, light will shine through. Lucius Hogan, Gwyneth the dragon in the back, and Estrilda. Civilization born of fire, destruction wrought of flame. And then you have Frampton here. A benevolent flame-wielding avian and an insatiable flame-craving demon. Solaris Flare, an inextinguishable flame born of the blazing sun and the heat heart of the world. <laughs> this little rabbit, it's healed! <laughs> so they can heal with their fire, which is really, really cool, right? Um, and uh, I don't know why this won't let me switch to, ah, because my journey game froze. That would be why. <laughs> Having quite the day. This flame was bestowed upon me by my ancestors so that I could protect Asperia. Ah, she's got the hair. Then, meanwhile, in the dark forest. Oh, that's a neat image. Slam! Demon, the dark forest will never let you. <laughs> ah! Oh man, it's brutal. Frampton and the Phoenix Flower. Oh, that's good. That is solid right there. A fine appetizer. There she is with her sword. So, oh man, I poge in. A finch? First time I've laid eyes on such a form. That's nice. And your last! Uh-oh, she looks scared. <laughs> wow. The long-forgotten taste, <laughs> Solaris Flare. <laughs> I can't wait to gorge myself.
Oh man, she looks good there. Busty. <laughs> it really is all about Hypogeans trying to take Asperia at all times. That is like the, the story of our world. It becomes the the battleground for the universe, essentially, because Honus gave Dura the key, the astral key, and she hid it in Asperia. And so the entire universe converges here for battle over like existence, essentially. They're crashing down through the trees. Oh, man. She landed hard there. <laughs> the Solaris Flare is all mine. Oh, he's grabbed her. She's a bird again, and he's got her by the neck. Cool. How it cuts into her eyesight. Taylene, wake up. Eh? Looking like Chicken Little. Ma, I had a funny dream. What did you dream about? The outside world again. Stone cities built of brick and an endless woodland and a lifeless desert without a single blade of grass. Just as you told me. And so, so, the Solarin Furnace? Oof, that... That's the cradle of the obsidian finch creation. <laughs> Where our souls belong. I remember now. When I'm all grown up, I'm going to see the world, Ma. But first you need to learn to defend yourself, Taylene. By then I'll be able to protect us both. Boom. What's that? I'm going to take a look. Don't worry, I'll be back in a flash. All right. If only I could grow up faster. There's your finch chick, Christina. Little baby. Ma! Oh, that same eye shot. Burn, yes. Burn! <laughs> if your flames don't raise everything, it will have no meaning. <laughs> Ma! Taylene, get away. He's really got her by the neck. The Finch's flames. will never burn to destroy!
妈。Taylin, be a good girl. Survive. Go now. The Solaris Flare is mine. Another obsidian finch has fallen. Are they fated to extinction? No, the bloodline will live on as she does. Dang, Taylene and her mother just right there, man. It's quite an image. Ma. What happened, Taylene? Oh, I failed again. The flame is out. My child, our flames are not of earthly fire. They cannot be harnessed in a day. If the flame goes out, just light it again. It took me a long time to understand. What she meant that day. A flame that's gone out can be ignited again, but a life that's gone. Ma. You once said there's a place far away that all obsidian finches can call home. I'll take you there. Back to the Solarin furnace. Ooh, nice shot with the vines. I love the vines. And she found a city made of stone. <laughs> She's getting tired. And she passes through the light bearer city to the Solarin furnace. We saw what happened here. Oh, she's trying to get up. Can't get up. That's a great image. You can tell what's going on, even though it's a still. They're so good at that with these these really artful comics. This is wonderful. I love that I love that just in a single image you can tell that she's trying really hard to flap to carry it and it's too heavy. Okay, so she has to go into the fire. And then they they swirl all around her, yeah.
Do not be afraid. We will always go with you. The fire will transform your wings and grant you immortality. The fire will grant you life and new power. Use this power to fulfill your duty as an obsidian finch and protect Asperia. That is their purpose, is, to pro is the protectors of Asperia. Shine warmth on all with Solaran light and burn evil down with Solaran might. Use this power to fulfill your duty as an obsidian finch and protect Asperia. Shine warmth on all and burn evil down. I will wield this power. Ah, uh, the sword. Ho oh, ho ho. Girl means business. Nice. Oh, I love this. You can see the human figure in the middle of it. For some reason, my Twitch chat isn't showing up here, but what's up? <laughs> nice to see you. Here's her sword just sticking out of some guy. From the instant I obtained this power, I began treading the path of vengeance. Yeah, that sounds about like her life story. She's been kind of on a vengeance path. Man, I hope they make her so freaking good in Journey. Oh, I hope she's awesome. Whoa, look at, oh, look at this little guy. Oh no, I want him. I want to play as him. He's amazing. I dreamt of that nightmare scene more times than I could count. I know that until I find that hypogean, the fire raging in my heart can never be extinguished. No, look at this little old man, Wilder. It's like a little old man, Lorson. Oh my goodness, wait. Uh. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, here he is, bigger. Old man Lorsan. It's not really Lorsan, guys. I'm joking about that. I really do like the uh, the different Wilders, though. This is cool. Um, I'll link it, Triv. Sure. Yeah. Uh, they are. They do these for several different stories of of Asperia. um there's one going on right now for entendre the awoken entendre that was the other subject i was going to cover today but we're going to stick to taylene um and i might do a special entendre episode tomorrow actually but there and there's one for eugene and gavis they are at, what's this site called? Inker, but I'll link you this one here. Ah. <gasps> 
Look, Tim, that flame's like mine. <laughs> Taylene's face says, no, it's not. <laughs> what are you? Where are you going? I can come too, right? <laughs> this image. Taylene's got shit to do, and Aster's like, Wee! <laughs> Simon says, This looks like us. I think I'm Taylene, and she's Aster. Yeah. <laughs> this is so great, man. I don't think I took a screenshot of this. I need to. That's so awesome. You get the full full scale, yeah. Tam, can you guess what fruit she likes? She doesn't like fruit? Hmm. I don't know what to feed this girl. Mother, no, no, no. Kayleen. Run! No! Taylene, are you okay? Was it a nightmare? This child is just like I was back then. Wow, guys. I remember when Taylene's um, Awoken model was first released. They literally did a, what do you call, hot fix and made the chest smaller after everybody started talking about how bouncy her chest was. <laughs> As a, as a character model, they, I think within 24 hours of the launch, uh, they, they ninja hot fixed it and flattened it out considerably. It was a big deal at the time. We were all sure they hadn't done something like that before. Also, I, I vaguely, I, I vaguely remember that it was pretty outrageous. It, I, I, I'm sure there's a video somewhere. We'll have to find it. Like, I remember thinking, like, well, yeah, as crazy as I thought that that was to do, I remember thinking, like, I understood why, <laughs> but I, I don't remember exactly what it looked like. They are front and center in some of these, though, but it's a comic strip. I mean, you know. Part of the bag. Ooh. I love all these different kinds of hypogeans getting thwacked around. That's my favorite comic book word, by the way. Thwack. Boom. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, ducking cover. It's safe now. When you're facing an enemy, it's vital you retain you maintain your calm. What? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. Do you want some fruit? Try it. This is Aster and Tam's favorite. Aster? Is that your name? Uh-huh. And this is Tam. <laughs> I'm Taylene. <laughs> this is great, Tim. We made a new friend. Actually, Astar can also use flames. Oh, ha! Ah! And the next one is the best move of all. <laughs> Astar hates the rain. Huh? It stopped? Taylene, can I become as amazing as you? Mm hmm. Like now? What about now? Master, if you were to become powerful, what would you most want to do? If I became powerful, I'd beat up the bad guys and I could, I could protect people. I could teach you, but you're not allowed to slack. <laughs> Wonderful! Aster won't slack off. No way! We got this! Uh -huh. Oh boy. That looks dangerous. AF, huh? That leads right up to these. <laughs> but seriously though, like what's what's going on here? This is something. This is neat. This is humans being up to no good, man. This is quite an image. This is going in my world history. Supreme Flame Frampton, devourer of flames. We, your obedient followers, would offer ourselves as your kindling. Come forth and raise everything to ash.
Focus. Sharpen your aim. Shwa, shwa. You must be agile to dodge the enemy's grasp. And precise to counter with force. This is neat. Her, she's trying to shoot her little fireballs everywhere. Not quite working. Um, I used to have Aster built. I actually did her as one of my swaps to 30 SI uh, over to someone else because she just isn't used that often anymore, unfortunately. Um, wait, where did that go, though? Oh, I see. Here we go. Uh, not looking for Frampton. He's actually looking for Aster. I did just finish Frampton. Well, he's nearly finished. There she is. Aster is ready. <laughs> oh, let me hush her. <laughs> hush now, child. But Taylene, it's almost dark. Aster is tired. Can we start again tomorrow? <laughs> okay, you can rest for now. We'll continue tomorrow. Taylene is perfect, but she'd be even better if she gave Astar a break. Tam, I have an idea. <laughs> Taylene will definitely like this. <laughs> if she's happy, she'll let me take a day off. Huh? What a pleasant surprise. <laughs> uh, let me go. Come get some water, Aster. Aster? Tam, where is Aster? <gasps> they have her in a little cage. Oh no. Let me go, let me go, Taylene, where are you? Uh -huh. I love you can see the motion of this shot, right? You can see the the fish eye bowl bubble of the the frame. I mean, these are so well drawn. This is really lovely art. What an offering. <laughs> Yes, he will be pleased when we sacrifice this one for sure. Let me go! Jump. <laughs> Let go! Thwack! Ugh. <sighs> Curse you, little brat! Slice. Wow, open him up. Oh man, I want to see just a little more of the inside, right? Like a little half a brain drawn or something would be really cool. It's pretty good though. You can tell what, what just happened. Because there's that, and then this. And then that. <laughs> 
Don't be afraid, I'm here. It doesn't hurt. Sleep now, Aster. Mm-hmm. And now... Where is he? I... I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play dumb! Where'd you get the purple flame? Please, mercy, from Frampton. We find flames for him and he gives us power. Where is he? The, the dream wood. There's a rare flower deep in the dream wood. It fosters a mouth-watering flame. We're searching for it to feed to Frampton. <laughs> Enjoy your feast, Frampton. <laughs> the dream wood. Oh, Tam bopped her on the head. Taylene, where are you? Brrr. You mean she went to the Dreamwood by herself? I know a path there. Let's go find her. It's so big, though. Where could she be? Taylene! Oh, boy. That is not Taylene, darling. Oof. Dope. Oh? You smell familiar, little one. Yes, of course. The Solaris Flare. Murderer! Okay, we're about to get to the big fight. <laughs> So, they has a big battle, which we kind of watched, actually. I think we did that video. The Solaris Flare brought to her knees. She really is, huh? She looks worried. Oh. What's that? Is that Aster? Gotta be. Yeah. Aster! Little pest! It's me you want, not her! Ow! <laughs> Get to a safe place. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's trucking. She ran all the way out of the frame. Ooh, boy. Tam is strapped in. Wow, cool. That is a neat explosion. Dang, that's really cool. And she's like blown back by the force. Man, re I'm really impressed by how much motion is visible in the art, you know? Like how how clearly it is that that she's getting blown back here. Uh, 
Okay. Despair. Now that would be a tasty addition to your flame. Quite stubborn, aren't you? Okay, so she got to Aster. She's got her. Let's see how long you can hold me off. And then this is, of course, Taylene's awakening. Taylene, we're going to be okay, right? Don't be afraid, Aster. I won't let a Hypogean win. You being here could distract me, though. So your next training exercise is to... Run as fast as you can to get away from here. But Aster can protect Taylene too. Don't dawdle. Go. Okay. <laughs> That's a good girl. Now. Ka-chao. Glass break. He breaks through her shield. And suddenly... This is neat. Ma. I'm... Sorry. Ugh, Aster, you dumb beezy. Why are you running back, girl? Tilene! What should I do? Wait, Taylene has used her flame to make me better. Maybe I can do it too. Astar will protect you. Wow. Taylene, Astar can't do it anymore. Astar probably can't. Finish training. Astar will protect you. Astar? Astar? I used to believe that after I had the flame from my ancestors, that I could defeat the Hypogean that haunted my dreams with fear. But even with this flame, I can't defeat the fear deep within me. Now that this child has used her own feeble flame to protect me, I finally understand. My fear, it was never you. I was just afraid for that part of myself that can't protect anyone. Wow. What? Boom. Vroom, vroom. You were so lost in trying to wreak fear and destruction with fire that you never stopped to think about the light and warmth it can bring too. All right, then, let me have a taste. Oh, oh, oh. He wants a taste. Oh, man. Powerful magic. Talented, powerful, talented magic. Oh, 
Oh, his face. Master, wake up. Oh. Tailing? Did Aster keep Tailing safe? Yes. And blonde. And bustier than ever. With feather sleeves to boot. Tailene, what's wrong? Why do you look all grown up? Nothing. I'm just thinking we should increase our training. What? But by just a little bit, right? <laughs> when the sun comes up, it's not just the moon that's up in the sky. It's also the Hypogean who's trying to take over the world. The narrator tells us that he's pretty sure that the sun's going to destroy everything in its path. He's got a pretty good idea of what that means, though. He figures that if the sun doesn't destroy everything, he'll still be able to use the light of the moon to his advantage. Huh. I don't think that they understand that chapter at all. <laughs> Or it's about a different one. That was their summary. Hold on. What does this one say? I bet these are AI written just like everything else. Oh my goodness. About this chapter. Because this sounds like AI wrote it. It's dark outside and a star is tired. <laughs> she wants to go back to sleep, but she can't find her way back to the forest. That is not the plot here, but it is what AI might think it was. That's too funny. So I think we can safely assume that we won't ever see uh Shoot, I lost my train of thought. Um, well, anyway, I, I do believe we're getting the original Taylene, not the Awoken Taylene, which is another reason that plot-wise... I think there's a lot to be said for the fact that we're in sort of a prequel era to AFK Arena. Yeah, a star is tired, right? How AI is that? Hey, man, for sure, Triv. Thanks for hanging out, man. This is, I mean, that is essentially the story of Taylene as we know her so far. She also appears in Tassi's Dream, which I think may be part of how she's getting introduced here with Tassi and uh, Almus. So I'm going to get into that here in a second. Um, so we did the Tossy story last weekend. Tassi and Almas were fighting Hypogeans together. 
But in Tossie's dream, let me find that. It's wisdom and hope, but is there? Okay, I didn't think so. This flame cannot be extinguished. You will pay for your actions. Will pay for your actions. Oh, come on. We just had it last weekend. I can't find uh, Tassi's dream where Taylene comes to her. Misdeeds will not be forgiven. My light will always burn bright. Ah, well, we shall read it when we come to it another time then.
Um, it's not a long one. It's just a mention of Taylene coming to Tassi in a dream uh, to warn her, I believe, about the fact that the barred gate is not going to hold, basically. The barred gate is uh, busted. Ah, the history of the Dreamwood is interesting, where Taylene just went. So the Dreamwood is a strange and mysterious section of the Dark Forest. In daylight, birds sing in the glorious sunshine as normal, but at night, the entire area turns into a fantastical, bizarre dreamscape, full of spontaneous illusions and magical occurrences. As the sun sets, the whole Dreamwood becomes enshrouded in an ethereal glow. The very air shimmers as starlight refracts into sparkling fluorescence by a magical shroud, while gigantic mushrooms release clouds of glowing spores and countless colorful flowers. They shine brightly as they sway in the gentle evening breeze. Wilder scholars have concluded that the Dreamwood must somehow slip between the material plane and the dream world every night, as the laws of physics seem to be weakened and become malleable. This phenomenon allows those of strong enough will to alter their environment as if in a lucid dream, bending and changing reality in small ways. This strange fantastical occurrences of the Dreamwood attract many creatures, including some said to exist only in legends. Every night, these wondrous beings appear in the Dreamwood to sing and dance the night away. Their voice is mingling with the more prosaic croaking of frogs, hooting of owls, and chittering of bugs heard throughout the rest of the dark forest. Their singing is full of magical power, with some plants in the Dreamwood seeming to awaken in response to their call. They can be observed to uproot themselves and move around, emitting a shimmering glow as they sway and dance to the Fey songs. Fey, F-E-Y, meaning that of fairy. Fairydom. All right, um, and then I'm going to read about the Celestials for a moment. All right, covering uh, on on the topic of Celestials, of which Taylene is one, as we just were discussing.
for one, we have, let's see, we know the story, of course, the War of Truth, with how Lucilla and her brother Liberta became Hypogean and Celestial. I don't know the story of the twins. Interesting. I, I wonder how, I don't know their story at all. Um... But I believe they're from the initial... round of gods. Yeah, they were charged by Dura millennia ago to forge peace and cooperation between mortals. It is their duty to repair the cracks between people and to foster good ties between them. That's nice. They were created from starlight in an ancient and dark era where savagery and brutality reigned. So they're from the initial round. Uh, they're like old school gods, just the same as Damia. Damia's story is on my YouTube as well. She's the spirit of summer. One of the first audio stories that I put up. It's an excellent one. I really like her story. Um, it doesn't talk about her creation so much as what her duties have looked like over the thousand of years and how she became uh, enamored with humans when at first she was very, very indifferent to them, but through Dura's influence she came to like them. We know that uh, Vithael was Mr. Handsome in life and asked to become a, he was asked to be a celestial after achieving godlike fame in his battles against Hypogeans. and was given immortality. Flora is old school. Orthros is actually the hands of primordial matter that Dura takes in the, in the story of the creation of the world and creates a clock. That clock is Orthros. Athalia seems, I don't know her origin, but I know that she's been a living pair of blades. She's she's a living s pair of swords. Athalia could best be described in her current form as a living weapon. She was once a mortal woman, but after being ascended by Dura and made a demigod to serve in the Celestial Order, she wields incredible power. Has always found Dura's kindness for mortals perplexing. <laughs> yeah. Athalia not a fan of the peoples too much which is the part that was her awakening in fact she woke up to the fact that people weren't all awful truly <laughs> um audrey and moriel are all are some of the oldest ones in existence they are perhaps the oldest celestials that we have uh with their story going back to before asperia they're actual like universe celestials they're not demigods. I would say they're god gods. Um, they're like in the stars. They're constellations almost created from the void realm power, I believe. Um, the Zora Nebula. Hold on.
so Audrey went exploring the, they were from this nebula called the Zora Nebula. And when it finally kind of imploded, Audrey broke free as she was the embodiment of choice and free will where her sister Moriel was um, structure and order to things. And she explored the universe on adventures. She passed by deserted, overgrown planets, discovered an existence similar to her own. Deep in one of the furthest corners of the universe, she transformed the power entrusted to her into a stellar bow and arrow, with which she fought against malicious darkness. She loved her adventures, never feeling alone nor scared of the unknown. No one can say how long it took, but eventually, she touched upon a tiny corner of fundamental truth about the universe. It was a shadowy abyss where order had been thrown out of balance and evil festered. Dead planets loomed within, perhaps even the nebula which once had been her home. This place was, of course, known as the Void Realm. Planet after planet, star after star. And her sister... The goddess Dura unexpectedly found Moriel drifting amongst the stars. Using her own power, she healed and restored the greatly diminished Moriel. And for a long time, Moriel was one of Asperia's gods. She discussed fate in depth with the clock-bearing god and learned from Dura of the possible sources of the darkness and the void realm. They also call it the star grave, the result of collapsed stars at the end of their life. After the Hypogean War, Moriel felt the power of the Void Realm was gradually increasing. Departing Asperia, she made for the clouds and began an investigation, knowing she must keep a close eye on any irregularities of the Void Realm. Then she runs into her sister, and the two become Asperian gods together. And of course, Alna has always been here protecting Asperia. I believe Alna is like as old as, at least as old as Asperia itself. Yeah, we never learn where she came from, but she's always been here. So let me read of the Celestials as a general species for you. There are divergent opinions and much speculation concerning the origins of the gods. Some say they have existed since Honus created the universe. Others claim they were once mortals raised to divinity in honor of their incredible skill or mighty deeds. Others still posit that they were at first as unaware as vegetation but were imbued with the spark of conscious godhood through some divine miracle. In fact, all these theories contain elements of the truth. Ah, it's just as we've been saying. There is indeed the original pantheon of deities as created by Honus. 
added to their number are those gods defined deified by mortals are those gods deified by mortals and more than a few who started as unconscious or inanimate objects before some miracle befell them the gods of Asperia make their home in the polar regions on the peak of the highest mountains there the gods each attend to their own divine responsibilities they work their miracles and wield their power to influence nature, maintaining the delicate balance of the world. Aside from this, they are charged with yet another more important task. Dura, before her death, extracted a vow from the gods that they would use their divine power to maintain the seal on the barred gate, deep beneath the mountains. For beyond the barred gate lies another dimension, a void plane in which are sealed a horde of ancient demons, the Hypogeans. A powerful energy vortex separates this plane from the material world of Asperia, keeping the Hypogeans trapped therein. But as centuries passed and the barred gate remained unchanged, the gods grew lax. Becoming complacent, even, they forgot their promise to Dura and thought no more of their duty. The Hypogeans however, never abandoned their lust for destruction. While the gods grew ever more unconcerned, the Hypogeans' efforts to break the seal continued unabated. Finally, after a thousand long years, success and their terrible freedom are here at hand. A source of energy, a surge of energy, was unleashed as the Hypogeans broke free and tore the mountains to pieces, wounding the gods, woof, wow, wounding the gods, <laughs> goodness, are they spelled the same? They may be. Wounding the gods and destroying their home in the process. Ah, but it wouldn't be wound, it would be winding, wouldn't it? <laughs> wounding the gods and destroying their home in the process. Moreover, Having failed to fulfill their vow to Dura, the gods' pure divinity was tarnished, cast down and cast out. They were no longer gods, becoming instead the Celestials. Losing their fully divine status forced them to wander the lands of the mortal realm. To regain their lost divinity, these Celestials must swallow the ultimate indignity of uniting with the mortals of Asperia to repel the Hypogeans' invasion. For they are now demigods, and must sing for their supper. They brought it on themselves, man. <sighs> All right. That is today's lore lessons on Taylene. I am going to continue digging for the Tassi Taylene dream. I, I don't know how I had it last weekend, but I did and now I don't. <laughs> but I have a feeling it may play a part in her introduction unless they kind of just throw her at us, which also kind of looks a little bit like what they're going to do. But if they do it with lore at all, they would work her in with Almas and Tassi, I believe, and there is a way to do so using the dream. So we will see about that. Um, now let's get down to some gaming. <laughs> What's up, Miss AFK Journey? Nice to see you. Welcome, friend. Man, that was a pretty good stream about Taylene. I'm pretty happy with that as as a, as background. I feel like we got through a lot. I feel like we got a pretty good understanding of who she is from that. I sure was. I think this is the best one. The haste ones. Haste and skill power. What we got here. HP and attack speed. I mean, attack speed's good. Like, but haste is better because it's haste 
and attack speed is haste. Haste is just attack speed and more things. Now, it is a little bit more attack speed, but um, what's this thumb up? Does that mean they think it's better? It feels like they think that one's better for some reason. The thumbs up. Anyway, what we got here? Nothing else? Okay. Part of me feels like I'm never going to spend these. You know what I mean? I feel <laughs> sometimes I want to just spend them and give her these tiny half percents just because I have these red things sitting here, but I don't need a six star merrily. But like, am I ever going to have something at 15 again? Maybe. Probably eventually, I suppose. We'll keep them for now. All right. Ugh, I am going to switch it to... Contribution, 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 which is you, 15, 1, 9, 1, 7, 1, 11, 1, 12, 1, 23, blah, blah, blah. So up to when we get to Vatra, Vatra through Kawhi, give are giving a bunch extra. Everyone's getting, what, 127? Everyone's getting 127? Yeah. So... People are contributing much less. I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. So, let's see here. But if it was just... If it was just what you contributed, I wouldn't like that. But activeness, I feel like, is is cool. That would That works a little bit for me. I like activeness better than the other way, so... Let's do that and yeah. Okay. Everyone's pretty active though. So yeah, frankly, let's do it. Let's just do it now. Um, cool. Do need to use her, so we shall use her up. We'll use them up because they have all this extra. Uh, so makes sense. A battlefield more merciless than the frigid winter. I don't think I need to use Iron here. Although maybe I don't know. Um. Maybe some cocoa. Just don't want anybody to die. I don't think they will. 
Mm. The most beautiful flowers can have the sharpest thorns. Shoot, I can't decide. New That'll do it. Let's go. Easy peasy. Fifty four. The title of the swordsman. I don't even need Iron, and we can save him for. Well, I need to use him because he's going to get too many. Pay a price. Uh, who else is here for farming specifically? For farming would be like Parisa and. A battlefield more merciless than her, frigid wind and Arden. But Parisa has more energy, so yeah, that's perfect. All right, let's go. Thunder, lightning. Listen to the voice of the flowers. Horace wisdom. Nine back. Because these cost twice as much, now, or one and a half times. Uh, all the farmings are 18 this time instead of 12, if you guys hadn't noticed. And you get nine back now, so still half of it back. blooms most beautifully what kind of treasure awaits us today Save them for Odie. Um, new foes, new challenges. By the title of the swordsman. Right down the center. How? How's your battle drills going, uh, Miss AFK? Also, guys, remember, this is the end of the month right now. I meant to send a, a guild mail out earlier. I should have done it. Uh, I'll send one out right now. It's it's the end end of the month, so. Every sword is a witness.
Monthly resets in 27 minutes. Arena store. Dream store. So, I was thinking of buying at least one more Lucius. Let me see. So, I can't quite buy him out, but I could once it resets, and I probably should, frankly. Um, I think same thing with Arden. I'm like one away from what I need. Let me see. And then Odie as well is very close. So, he's 37, so I only need, what, eight more? And he'll be uh, Paragon. Arden needs 10 more for Paragon. Lucius needs um, 11 more for Paragon. So I can Paragon two of the three of these guys right now. Well, Ed resets. Neither Arden nor Lucius can quite... He needs 11 and he, and he needs 10. They each need one more than they have available. the thought process on what to do because the weekly resets coming up is actually a bigger deal, I believe, on my global account, which we'll take a look at here in a moment. We got, oh, the new hairstyle. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I was wearing it for a second on the other account. I was. Um. Oh, right. We got the new smoky title. What is it? Oh, and Rainer. We got 4,500 from Rainer and from Smokey. Jury and Apothecary. Cool. Wow, you can have fun with Jury, huh? Rich, reformed, chivalrous, sweet, fierce, passionate, shy, sneaky, innocent, wandering. I can't think of a good adjective for jury. None of them are kind of cool like I want it to be. You know? The sparkly's kind of funny, but... Raging Sands. But no, I, I do enjoy the Arcane Emperor very much. Very, very much. Um, Let's find out. Let's make sure we've still got that locked down, too. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. And today is, of course, the day where you can do all of the Dura trials, so. May the wind and frost unite as one. Every sword is a witness. Awesome. That's my first Shakir charm, I think. Or at least, the f no, I maybe have one more. Uh, it's life drain. But hey, at least we got one. I want so many good, good dits. Probably like the worst one. <laughs> life drain i mean you know if i wish like maybe if you give him a bunch it might actually work well I don't, i'll have to play around with it i can't wait to play around with charms like i said I'm really excited about that for the rest of this season being able to play with the different stats i'm sending out a guild mail on the alt right now i i could probably turn on the camera i didn't do that during the lore you guys know i don't like to but um i could now uh What up? <laughs> oh man, I look hit. <laughs> Whew. There we 
去惊。Okay. We just finished Granny recently. We just got Granny done uh, earlier in the week. I haven't done her EX. I wasn't gonna, but now I've been kind of tempted the last few days just because she's still pretty weak. And I hear that that's what she needs, but I don't know. It doesn't seem that strong to me, except for the stats, maybe. The stats might actually be pretty uh, effective. Okay, so we maybe can't do that one right now. I don't know why, but... I'd like to. Let's see. It's a rogue. Win within 65 seconds. Well, come on. What's the deal? They did this at 450 with, I mean, we have exactly the same. Well, I guess our Lucius isn't, well, we'll have him soon, I guess, Mythic Plus. That's what these all have in common, is a Mythic Plus Lucius. Here we go. I think we have a good shot with this one. Okay. May the wind and frost unite as one. Yeah, it's the arena and the dream stores especially, guys, are the ones where you might want to buy something before the monthly reset happens. In 15 minutes. Sent. All right. Let's see. More mages. More mage battles. Yes. Records. your bill my children <laughs> all right we got this one the experiment 
was a total success. Well, a Carolina one. What's that? Attack? Hey, that's great. Okay, 5% attack boost to Carolina. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Yeah, I really want to farm mage ones especially. Mages and, of course, marksmen for uh, Dream Realm. Everywhere, right? Yeah, I have a big decision to make right now in... Uh, fucking Citrana and Vip... I've got so many Viperian charms, man. I can't even tell you guys. Uh, um, I really have a big decision to make on global of what I pick up from the dream store. Sorry, the arena store. Dream store, not, not as much. Dream store is fine. But the arena store... Uh, I have all these coins, and I need to figure out what I'm going to build next. So, we'll go over there in a second. Come on, finish him. Come on. I think we got this. Is that within the time limit? I bet it is. Yeah, should be. <laughs> a bit of experience, a bit of luck. Here you go, Odie. More flippin' Viperian charms, you guys. Look at this. So many Viperian charms. Oh my god. Uh, so many Viperian charms. New food is coming. Let's take a gander at what... Ascension needs to happen on global. Please grant us eternal peace. Probably Hewan is what I'll do. I can ascend Hewan all the way right now. Could also almost do Granny. But again, I, I've never needed Granny. Um, of course, I do feel like I kind of need her now on... Um, in this season, I've, I've, I, I have been glad to have just built her on the main on PTR here, so... Or Cassidy. I'd rather build Cassidy. So, all right, we're going to we're going to bounce on these. Support charms. Oh, I was looking for, you know, the goofy support lineups where there's only two heroes so that nobody dies. Looking for one of those. They're usually effective. Hmm. Down goes Lucius. My wisdom knowledge will crush you. Oh, sorry, baby girl. Here we go. What happens if we just take him out? Oh my. Looks like someone needs a little warming up. Okay. Oh, and of course we can't forget Supreme Arena. My wisdom knowledge will crush you. Calculating soon. We should go do that now. That does take priority over all of this. Okay. So. Let's equip. Let's use these first. Hold on. There we go. Okay. <sighs> Come on. Merrily and Odie. Okay. 
I don't even own Atalanta. I literally don't own that hero on this account. Okay, more Seth. Why not? Arden, 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 Arden. Come on, Arden. There he is. There's one anyway. What is it? Attack and ult the blast charm. There's worse. <laughs> what I want is the haste, man. Haste on all these guys is just so good. Haste is what where it's at. What are you chuckling at? What do you know about it? Of course, it's the same one that I already have one for. Golly, who would have guessed? Smile. HP and attack, baby. Let's go. Have you ever wondered why some things can float in the air? All right. Oh, whoops. I thought it was a middle one. Oh, well. Ah, all right. Shakir. Hell yeah. Shakir with the life drain. What's this one? I didn't see this one. Crit, oh, the crit damage boost and some haste. Hell yes. That's got to be good. And the and the vigorous. Okay. All right. I'm a little questionable about this life drain one, but hey, man, that's... He's got three mythic charms. I'm happy. And of course, food new food is coming. <laughs> All right. What are, this one's the haste, right? Haste and skill power. This is haste and skill power. What's this? HP and attack. Yeah, okay. All right. HP and healing, HP and ultimate strength. Why that one? Uh. Okay. Is that all of them? Yes, for now. Okay. And now we go to the arena. Lay it all down. And then burn. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. Shoot, man. How? How? All right, get out of here. Come on, let's go. I bought a Cassidy, by the way, um, on Global just now. Just seemed like the right choice. Um, so I'll be able to ascend her to Mythic. Or Legendary Plus and then Mythic, right? Gosh, come on. I wish you could skip these fights, man. They could be calculating any time. I need to, need to move. Okay. Let's go. Come on. No! Settlement completed! Fuck off! Is that is that the weekly one too? 
Probably. Should have done it earlier, I guess. It will be so easy for me. You know, it really is so easy for me to be. And also, that's why I died back there. It's just because I had them all rushed up there for basically no reason. Um. Okay. And Please. I should have put nobody down if I was trying to be faster too. Should put nobody down on the first team. All right, I clearly need to do something different with that second team. I'm not sure what. I don't know how people keep getting the edge on me. It looks like it's even to me, and then it's not. Then maybe they have haste gems on their irons. Ooh, maybe. Can you get him going even quicker. Frustrating that that happened. They calc. I've always. I didn't know it does it ten minutes in advance. That's kind of like really early, you know. It's like super soon. Um. I'm gonna try this one more time. You know what I want to do? Let's do this, at least. Hmm? What's up? Come on, Cassidy. Here we go, guys. Enhance. Boom. Boom. Cassidy is now plus three stars. All right, we got to use these. So let's use them on mages, maybe. Man. Uh, or rogues. Yeah, mage. Come on, good shit. Let's go. Come on. Arden, hey, we got an Arden. Oh my god, it 
Oh, hey, some Parisa down at the bottom. Okay, and an Arden. Okay, 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 okay. Like the some of these drive me nuts, but it's fine. And a Parisa up top too. All right, so we got some good. We got some cool stuff there. That's good. That's good. Okay, good, 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 good. And now we are at the time. The moment is here, basically. So. Uh, in this last minute, let's see here. Don't need these. 200, yeah, no, we're good. Uh, arena store, can't even buy anything there. But the dream store, do I need more than any amount of any of these guys? I figured out I, I will be able to buy as many Ardens and Lucius as I need once they reset. I'm not worried about those. The Damien's, uh, he's already a Mythic Plus, um, so I guess we're good there. And in the recruitment store, I never got through for this. That's good to notice. I never got this last Stellar Crystal, so that sucks, but, you know, is what it is. Um, recruitment store, yeah. It's, it is, honestly, it's a little odd. Um, okay, and now, who do I buy with this last? You enter Cassidy, make a choice, danger. Uh, let's go Hewan. Yeah, I bought a Hewan. Okay. And resets are upon us. Just like that. Let me just change the name of the stream right now since we're not doing lore anymore. All right. Oh, there's hidden tiles again this week. Okay.
What? There's no morale boost one this week? I love that one. Come on, really? Oh, what a bummer. It's just hidden tiles? That sucks, man. I really enjoy that one. And it has a ranged heart here. Okay. Well, that's a bummer. Huh. The world needs balance. Hmm, okay. Works for me for now. A battlefield more merciless than the frigid winter. Hmm. Are you lost? Follow me. Yep, that'll work. And then ranged heart attack speed of the hero placed on this buff tile by 20. Put Vala over here hidden. I thought about it. I don't mind that. And then, oh, we could do, I know what to do. We're gonna put, instead of Smokey here, let's use Sylvina. She's a nice hidden one. And 
Yeah, that's perfect. And then, because then the factions work out there too. And over here, we can do... Uh, Maybe like Viperian or honestly, Coco, super obnoxious in arena makes it really hard to injure people. Yeah, I'm good with it. All right. Oh, I didn't look at this. 